future research in our survey, we go with three kind of main recommendations. The first one is agri. So agri is a look at kind of matter for agriculture in a sense. So being the conjunction between you know, agriculture and entrepreneurship. So being in one spot within the Midwest where say you have a John Deere or Monsanto, a startup in seed science or maybe something where it's more kind of data learning for farming. And all those meet in one spot, along with kind of venture capital, meet all there, and so having to be spread out across the nation. And as you notice, when we were looking at the map for agriculture earlier, kind of everyone is spread out. So you might have ADM down in Decatur, which is just actually moved up to Chicago, Monsanto's in St. Louis, you have Cargo, which is far away also. The main thing is that there is no one area where everyone would go and meet at one time. And there's no one that's really trying to suit agriculture and kind of really trying to push for that one industry, as you might see with the new kind of Healthcare and biotech matter, or UI labs and manufacturing, or even H71 with digital. So we kind of see this as the missing piece that Midwest is really strong at, the missing issue that Midwest excels at. However, it's not here for at the moment. And I think many take for granted kind of the opportunities within agriculture in the sense that examples that in October 2013, Climacorp out of actually California sold for $1.1 billion to Monsanto. And usually people when they say billion dollar acquisitions, billion dollar exits. They associate with that digital or kind of electronics. However, agriculture is the same kind of metrics, the same multiples, because of the necessity within the environment. Okay. Next, we're going to the Practicum Institute. So Practicum Institute kind of really challenges the way you think about education. So when you think about having kind of innovative programs for all the universities, you should think, okay, really multidiscipline, maybe my child's and MBAs and the undergrads, kind of mix it up a little bit. However, Practical Institute is looking at adding another level to that. So adding maybe three universities, kind of different universities together, kind of building that network for the first time of universities collaborating on the administrative level along with the student level. And these, this kind of institute will be focused on teaching kind of these kind of best and brightest of these universities how to affect these industries. So say agriculture, what are the key challenges in there? Taught by CEOs in the area, executives in the area, venture capitalists, kind of how to handle these areas and what, what's to look into. But more importantly, it's kind of using all the universities to complement each other. So many universities in the area may excel as a business, no one may excel as computer science, no one may excel as medical equipment. However, although they are not as strong as they are together, that's really what we're trying to aim with the practice to do, and really kind of teaching them and showing them the resources within the region. So for digital, they could host the 871, for instance. So you get familiar with the 871 products along with being able to learn about the kind of next steps within the digital industry. Next, we're looking at the Midwest Showcase. As many know, there's multitudes of showcases and kind of entrepreneurial events within the Midwest for every single industry, and, but they all kind of follow the same line. It's basically closed doors, it's you got the investor, you got your startup, and that's it. The showcase, we're really trying to change that. So using kind of these events to really inspire the community. So an example would be having kind of a lot of stars with products and demos there. So they can say you have someone with a drone flying around the room or kind of explaining or showing what you created and having this environment at high school or college is kind of in inspiring them to say, look at kind of these rock star entrepreneurs standing up on the stage, they're presenting everything, you know, see them controlling the crowd, the opportunities that they have within them they may not be able to see through videos or TEDx conferences. So it's a big thing we're trying to excite the community and kind of grow the entrepreneurship within the community along with connecting those entrepreneurs and those investors. So kind of two-part system right there. And in addition, one of the big things we're trying to kind of differentiate ourselves between a lot of the other competitions is that looking at having partnerships with the Big Ten. So as we know, there's really a lot of Big Ten universities. They struggle in terms of kind of connecting the research part to research with the kind of investors and resources across bigger cities. So if you take Champaign, for instance, it's two hours out of Chicago. You don't get a whole lot of visitors down Champaign. Or say you have someone out of Des Moines, someone out of um, Columbus or Minneapolis, it's hard to really connect all these resources together and kind of give them one location so that all the investors can aggregate in one area along with all the other companies. So in terms of a concluding summary of our findings, we believe that the Midwest is uniquely poised over the next three to five years to really take advantage of not only the significant amount of capital that has come in through government funding, uh, but also the increases that are happening in venture capital uh, and private sector funding here in the Midwest, as well as a number of collaborative initiatives that are now underway. However, we feel that in terms of talent attraction retention, uh, there are many initiatives that can now be uh, capitalized on the research universities 
here in the Midwest, but also on attracting and retaining uh, emerging growth firms, particularly in areas such as agriculture, life sciences, and manufacturing, to stay here in the Midwest uh, and grow their companies here. Uh, in particular, I think it's a sense of community at the end of the day that really draws the entrepreneurs here to the Midwest. So over the last nine months, as we mentioned, we've conducted well over 100 interviews uh, with executives from across the Midwest. And throughout the entire process, uh, it's really been humbling, I think, for us to see uh, just the, the sense of community, whether it's individuals like Bruce Breaker uh, connecting uh, with manufacturing firms, uh, whether it's uh, individuals like Jets and Subu from Chicago Health Tech, uh, Jeff Carter from Heights Archangels, all these individuals have provided uh, a sense of community uh, and the linkage is necessary, not only for this initiative to take place, uh, but for many other initiatives that uh, are, are happening now around the Midwest. So we view uh, the region with a, a, a strong sense of opportunity. Uh, but I guess at this time, we'd like to open it up to any questions that uh, you might have. Uh, and uh, we'd like to thank uh, you, not only for attending, uh, but also um, for your continued support of what is happening uh, here in the Midwest. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, you uh, will feel passionate enough about this to uh, help incite some of the change that can garner for this region uh, the recognition uh, it deserves for the contributions being made here, not only for our startups, but uh, for the greater business community as well. So thank you so much. Uh